So what can we do? How can we protect ourselves in a situation like this? First thing is, we don't want to plug in a USB stick unless we're really sure of its contents. It's better to hand it off to a technical support person, or if you're at home, maybe a technical friend, so that it can be analyzed in a protected environment to be sure that it's safe to use. The other thing is to continue always to be suspicious about emails that you receive that you're not expecting, whether it's the links in them or the attachments. If you aren't sure, send it to security to have it analyzed. For home users, you can view a video about some free tools that are available for your use to analyze website links and attachments. You can find that video on my YouTube channel. The other important point is to avoid running your computing activities as an administrator on a day-to-day -day basis. In the past, we've explained this by using the analogy of driving your computer every day using your valet key. The valet key, which you would give to a valet, allows the valet to open the door and start the engine, but it doesn't give the valet access to your trunk or your glove compartment where you may have some valuables. So if you drive your computer on a day-to-day -day basis using your valet key, which is an account without administrative privileges, and it's an account that doesn't have access to anything that you would not want to have easily stolen, and then you elevate your privileges using a different account or the other key, when accessing your valuable information, you make it much harder on an attacker. So if your day-to-day -day account gets compromised, say through casual web browsing or an attachment or something, the attacker won't automatically have access to your valuable information. It's also a reason why it's really important not to use the same password on all your sites. Use different passwords, different passwords to log into your computer, and a different password for all your sites. Because if one password gets compromised and they're all the same, then your whole life is compromised online. And you don't want that. We'll talk a little bit more about password managers and why they can make this easy to do in just a few minutes. Of course, you want to guard your workspace. And don't leave your workstation unlocked where your account could be easily compromised. Remember, when you walk away, it's pretty easy to hold down the Windows key and tap the L key for an instantaneous lock of your screen. Finally and most importantly, we want to make our passwords useless to attackers. If an attacker steals our password from memory, we want them not to be able to get access to what they're trying to get access to because we've added an additional step of authentication. Two-factor authentication is something you really should enable wherever you can so that your passwords alone are useless to an attacker. We use the example of logging into a bank where you put your username in and then you put your password in and then it sends you a text message to your phone which is something you have and both of those are required to get access so if your password is stolen by a bad guy without access to your phone they won't be able to get access to your account you can visit twofactorauth.org for more information let's talk about passphrases a hacker can figure out a simple computer password in no time flat so we've instituted a new policy. Every password must contain a letter, a number, 25 punctuation marks, and nine words that rhyme. Pleasure, treasure, measure, semicolon, hyphen, comma. <laughs> We haven't been hacked yet. So we've talked about this before, but passwords like these can be cracked in literally a second. But even more complex, shorter passwords like this one can be cracked in a reasonable amount of time. But what we've learned also is that a password phrase, which may include spaces as well, in this case, four common random words, the time to crack is much, much, much longer. So passphrases are really the way to go. And we have learned that it's much harder for an attacker to crack a long passphrase than it is a shorter password. But what we want to focus on today is password managers. Because the reality is, if we do what we're supposed to do and keep a nice long passphrase for all of our different accounts, and at the same time we have to try to remember them, there's just no way. 
So password managers are made to help us with this. The video that you're about to see is not intended to be an advertisement for this particular password manager. However, it does describe very well the advantages of password managers and why you should use them. You have hundreds of accounts for websites, apps, and services, and each one gets a password. Most of us take something easy to remember, our dog's name backwards plus the year of our first kiss, and use that for everything. Easy? Sure. Secure? No, not at all. If one account were to get compromised, your whole life could be turned upside down. The smart thing to do would be create a unique password for every account, right? Secure? Sure. Easy? No, not at all. So what do you do? Write them in a notebook? Sticky notes? Make up a song? No, what you do is use a super smart, super simple app called 1Password. With 1Password, all you need is 1Password. What the app does is collect all your unique passwords into one super safe place and locks them up behind something only you know, your 1Password. And it's integrated right there in your browser. So when it's time to log in, just click the button, enter your 1Password, and you're in. Here's another cool thing. You come to a new site that asks you to make a new account. 1Password will generate a new secure password for you and save it where it needs to go. Next time you want to go to that site, just hit the button. 1Password will do its thing, and you're in. And it's not just for passwords, it's for all sorts of information you need to keep safe. Bank numbers, credit cards, top secret ideas, files, anything. All locked up where no one can get to them but you, with your 1Password. And your passwords are with you wherever you are because your 1Password syncs automatically between every computer and device you own. So it's always up to date. No more sticky notes, no more dog names, just you and your 1Password. Finally, when we're given an account at work, we are given the responsibility for what that account is used for. So the last thing we want to do is hand over the power to someone else to do things with our account outside of our control because we're still responsible for everything that happens using our account. So definitely don't share your password and don't accept a password from someone who wants to share it.